Just loading up the app so if there's a chat, I can chat. Fantastic. So today I've decided we're back in machine and we're doing some sample stuff because it's I've been composing a lot lately or doing hybrids, I guess you'd call them. But uh, I just want to get maybe back to some boom bap soul lo-fi something in that vein uh so i've decided to bust out ski beats smack pack volume five i did enter that contest way back when and it, the twenty dollar sound kit was worth it in itself there's a th sp303 folder so we're going to use that i'm going to get some headphones on one sec Obviously, I could browse with the controller and everything, uh, but sometimes it's easier to just drag and drop the stuff. It sounds like a heavy snare. You could always tune your drum. You hold the pad down, and while it's in tune, the tune button's lit up, and you hold the pad, and you just turn the knob. Strangely enough, I'm not hearing a change. That's okay. I like to turn my drums down in the sampling page over on the zone tab because then you're not touching the fader and you're actually getting proper gain staging. But yeah, how cool is it to have some drums out the SP-303? I don't own an SP-303, so it's cool. Sometimes instead of one shot mode, I like to use the ADSR on a drum sound, which doesn't make much sense, but gives you a lot of control. I just tightened up that hi-hat big time. Let's get it. Let's get it on beat. Uh, these drums sound dry to me. 
I don't mean that in a bad way, I don't think. It just seems like a kick snare hi-hat is not enough. So we're going to load a percussion loop. We're going to go with some MSX slump loop percussion. <laughs> Sounds good to me. My levels sound a little wonky in the headphones. I'm not sure where I'm at. Let's. Uh Just loaded something from the sample lab. I think the sample lab is the same people as the vintage vandals, DJ Payne One, Memory, and a few other people. Let's see what's up with this. I haven't purchased anything there yet, but I have got they made the isolation packs for like pandemic status. It was a like free gift to producers, so thanks for that. <laughs> When you play with Serato Sample and you're using Machine, by default, you're like over here or wherever it is, yeah, right there. Well, I guess you can't see my finger. Anyways, you want to drop the octave in keyboard mode so that your first pad lines up with your first chop right there. And I remember flipping this one on YouTube before, so I'm going to pick a different one doesn't that sound good It's interesting because the drum loop is obviously, you wouldn't necessarily think these would go together, but you never know. I'm all about experimentation. I'm assuming 90% of my creations is from not knowing what's happening next and just going with it.
Okay, so I am taking the easy way out. I am looping that because it sounds amazing. Uh, but it, I guess it's not starting at the beginning. It's starting like a bar in. So it's kind of a weird loop point, but it's a dope one. Machine's been kind of weird. Doesn't want to set itself. That's okay. I just want to make a quick note uh, with Serato Sample. If you have it on this default mode, it only sounds as long as you hold the pad down with this forward arrow underneath it. You just have to tap it in and it'll play out. Even if, um, like, let's say I held the pad down for the whole loop. There's still that gap where you let it go. Um, so with I, even when if I looped it, I would use this forward arrow, so it's going to play all the way through. That is cool. What I want to do is record it because I just that's what I want to do. So we're going to audio and record. There's my voice apparently. That's kind of cool. I didn't think I could use my voice in the program. Anyways, loop. It is four bars. And the source is internal. And it is this sample group B. recorded there. I'm glad the metronome isn't in there. Call this uh, you could just do away with Serato. Now it's in audio. good to play the sample in solo so you know is there bass in there or is there not and there really isn't so we're gonna maybe cut some of the lows and add our own So Ski Beats had provided a bass patches or bass tones from a modular synthesizer. So we loaded one up and we're going to use ADSR mode like it was a keyboard part. And they're tuned to C, which saves the work of trying to find the tune. Just turn some shit down. Might want to filter that or play it different. Okay. 
Okay, this might take a minute. Hard to hear. as close as we're going to get without wasting all your time. So that's dope. I think everything sounds good. I'm just going to side chain the drums to the instruments.
saw something. Someone there's something about two tracks on Twitter. Uh, I mean, they have their use. Like I mean, uh, a lot of people like a mix engineer wants wants your rough mix of what it sounded like before you before it's mixed, basically. And a lot of times they end up on the final project because they're just fine the way they are. Um, I want to start uh, making it mixing a separate process and, and mastering a separate process and not putting it all together, but it's quite convenient to, you know, put a limiter on or a no zone and call it a day. Um, it's definitely not a horrible mix, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, we're actually going to bust out Ozone because I finally have the full version. I was using Ozone 8 Elements before. And here we have Ozone 9 Standard Version. It's finally at a price I could afford. Well, I have the money to afford it, so it wasn't expensive at all. Um, of course, you could build your own chain. I don't know all these modules that well because <laughs> Ozone Elements 8 has two or three modules. I think it has an EQ, a stereo imager, and a limiter. This has clearly a lot more than that. But we could go for different types and settings. So we'll just start. Sorry, I'm stumbling. We'll go with a modern sound. Maybe we'll go vintage and see the difference. Okay, we're going to go vintage, and then you just easily choose low medium or high intensity which just means a little processing medium processing or a ton of processing I find highs rarely ever any good so lower medium is more like it so I just want to press play f before the mastering oops that doesn't work let's It already sounds vintage to me, but we're gonna just rock with see what see what Ozone comes up with. sounded like it was struggling hardcore so I'm just going to um, what's the word I'm looking for raise the buffer if that's even an option hmm. I know it is some way somehow that is okay Sorry if I'm being weird right now. Uh, you know, when you're doing this kind of stuff, like mixing and mastering, like trying to finalize something, I wouldn't suggest doing it in headphones unless you had no choice. Uh, I'm tempted to just check out the speakers. That sounds amazing. I think that's why uh, when I reviewed these headphones, it was my first YouTube video 
concerning audio or music production. Um, and it was a pretty cringe video, but it got, well, it's my most reviewed video. Anyways, these headphones are a freaking bargain. They're, at least at the time when I bought them, they were 100 US dollars. Um, and one of the things I thought was good about them is I could, basically what just happened, I just did the whole freaking beat, including some processing and mixing, mastering, rough, roughly anyway. And then when I take off my headphones and I play out the speakers, it's the same shit, just better. Um, so I'm lucky there because uh, when I had Audio Technica headphones, <laughs> that was a mess. You know, I'd, I'd check the speakers; it'd be a totally different story. So to have consistency between the two um, monitors were a bargain as well. Those are budget Mackies. So, anyways, we're not here to. to watch me talk I don't think but um, let's try a different setting on ozone that was a vintage setting let's try the modern setting first we'll just maybe do a I'm actually gonna do a back-to-back -back. I'm gonna load a second one but that vintage setting sounds good we're gonna try a modern setting Modern, medium, yada yada. So we could obviously hear the difference, uh, at least between unprocessed and processed. Before we go back and forth on this vintage and modern, I just want to go through some of this stuff. That looks so extreme. Is it? No. This low band is 1.7 decibels. This high band is 3 decibels, which is adding a bunch of high end, which makes sense because I do tend to darken my sounds and use dark sounds and something I've been working on, un trying to unlearn actually, to uh, have some high end in my instruments and drums and vocals and everything. Uh, this dynamics isn't even engaged. Dynamic EQ looks like it's notching. pretty cool it looks like it's doing something with the kick drum down here and something with the snare drum here uh, the maximizer see I'm a little confused because there's a maximizer and a limiter and I'm actually gonna have to do some offline studying like what's the difference I've been wondering that for a while I just haven't wondered enough to look look it up um, but yeah this I think similar to the one that came on the whatchamacallit The elements version on the elements version there's these modes and there's only two modes there's IRC one and two so there's like three new modes and each and some of these modes have three other settings so there's like way more to this plugin let's try that let's try let's try that we'll do true peak limiting and set the try and get a minus 13 ish luffs that just means it's maybe a little louder than usual and bring the ceiling down a bit and learn threshold it sounds like my computer can't handle it 
and it can. It's just the video thing. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It's like, oh, the video. Oh, the video. It's like ruins every stream because it cuts my CPU in half at least. Oh, yeah, that's frustrating, to say the least. Anyways, this isn't a no-zone tutorial or tortilla. I'm actually going to bust out the old one. No-zone 8 elements. Unfortunately, that's what we're doing. My first beat or my second beat? I think that was the first beat. Let's keep her going. I feel it's almost like I feel almost guilty for experimenting on live streams because I'm experimenting, it's not that exciting, but I feel like it needs to be done sometimes. But I don't want to waste anyone's time. While I'm farting with the plug in while it's crashing my computer. So we're just going to get straight into beat making and maybe not so much ozone. <laughs> That's random as Okay. All right, we're using the Queen's Bridge Story drum kit. Produced by Havoc. I'm definitely going to use that. And I'm going to put a big ass reverb like he would. It's cool with uh, H reverb by Waves. It has a couple options to dirty up the sound. Just the default kind of does it. But down here, there's a, a drive 
an analog on or off, and a digital 8-bit and 12-bit, which basically degrades the reverb. So let's go more wet. Crazy.
I think that little t t t t needs some reverb. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone's. Well, I see someone's left us something in the chat, but I think that might be spam.
think that's about it. Thank you for joining me today. I kind of streamed early. I may stream twice. If not, at least I streamed once. Um, normally I'd be at streaming this evening, but felt like making beats this afternoon. So here we are. Um, yeah, if you have any requests or questions, uh, I'm on Twitter, whatever, YouTube, etc. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. All right, peace.